Hello everybody! Boy, I'm excited. I'm finally getting around to doing a review of uh, my imaging telescope. I've had it for almost two years and I wanted to wait this long before I give it a thorough review. I'm Kurt Zapatello and you're watching Astro Quest One. So my telescope is the AstroTrac 115 EDT. It's an apple chromatic refractor and it's a 115 millimeter triplet. Now what does that mean? A uh, triplet first off means it con consists of three elements and the 115 part that means the size of the, the diameter of the lens which is right up here. So this triplet Triplet means it contains three glass elements that are pressed together, and in this case they're air-spaced. And one of those elements is ED glass. ED glass is extra low dispersion. Okay, now what, why, why do you want extra low dispersion? Well, it minimizes this thing called chromatic aberration, which most photographers are aware of. It's because the light paths of the different colored lights don't line up perfectly. But these refractors, these triplets that have this special glass on here, they minimize it or reduce it uh, for good. And I looked in the manual that came with the scope and they said the glass is, made, is an equivalent to the FL, FPL 51 uh, glass made by the O'Hara company in Japan. And if you're like me, I want to know well, what, what glass was used in here. And I called up Astrotech, who and Astronomics is the manufacturer or the company that owns Astrotech. Anyways, I contacted uh, Mike and he got back to me and said it's uh, KF61. And so I started looking up this KF61 and I couldn't, I, I found zilch. So, however, when I switched it around to FK61 and then put an H dash in front of it, why well, then it was, I, I got all sorts of information. I got the exact specs and everything. Now, I knew this telescope was made in China, so the, as I said, that O'Hara company is from Japan, so it wasn't that glass, but it was an equivalent glass. And this F HFK61 is made by CDGM Corporation, which is a Chinese company, so it makes sense that it's in here. And this glass is used in other telescopes, binoculars, and other such optical instruments. It's also equivalent glass to the FCD1 glass, which is made by Hoya Company, which is also a Japanese uh, glass manufacturer. Now, this ED glass, what does it consist of? It actually contains this stuff, uh, this naturally occurring mineral called fluorite. And fluorite's calcium fluoride. And what they do is they put this uh, synthetic fluorite, uh, they just make it in the laboratory and put it in this glass, and it's Fluorite actually has good transmission properties, light transmission properties, and so that's what gives it this, uh, or gets rid of the chromatic aberration. Okay, what can I say about this? Well, it's, we know that it's a, uh, a 115 uh, millimeter objective lens, and it's also 805 millimeters for the focal length. That is the distance from the lens down to where it comes into focus. That's called your focal length and that makes it an F7 refractor and it's medium size so we call this a medium refractor. Anything that's got 90 to 80 millimeter diameter refractor or lower that's considered a small refractor. Anything that's 100 to 130 millimeter diameter would be a medium refractor and anything that's 130 millimeter or greater would be considered a large refractor. Now, when I got started, and, and I recommend this if you're just getting started with astrophotography, I would go with a small refractor. You wouldn't want to start with a medium refractor for a number of reasons. But so this was, this was actually my second telescope. After I got really familiar with how to image, then I went to this thing, okay? It also has a sliding dew shield on here, and it's pretty easy to, 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 go, to move. I mean, I never had any problems moving it, and it never came loose either in the two years that I've owned it so far, so I've been very happy with that. And I've got some other stuff I want to talk about, too, like what it comes with. Hi, everybody. I just reoriented myself. 
So what's included with this telescope? What I just went over was the OTA, the optical tube assembly. But now I'm going to go over uh, one really important thing that's included, and that's the two and a half inch uh, dual speed rack and pinion uh, focuser, and it has a 10 to 1 reduction uh, for the fine focus. And it also has a 360 degree uh, rotator, camera rotator on it. And it comes with uh, two inch compression rings for diagonals and, and eyepieces and whatnot. The focus or the, it actually has 75 millimeters for uh, uh, travel space and it's got some millimeter markings on here too. So I thought that was uh, uh, really, really good. I'm gonna say that uh, if I was gonna give a rating for this focuser, I would say it's a really good focuser. I'm not going to say it's great, uh, and the reason I won't give it a great thing is because I noticed when it was near full extension, I noticed when it was cold out, it's, it gets a little tight. It, it, it's still movable and everything, uh, but I just noticed that, and I checked the reviews on AstroTech, and somebody else had commented on that very same thing. So it's really good, but I won't give it a great one just because of that reason. Uh, I use a motorized uh, stepper motor to control, to control it, and I have had absolutely no problems. If I ever went to a, I, ha, I have a ZWO EAF, but I went with a super focuser. If I was going to get a or a f automatic focuser, I'd probably go with a Moonlight or something like that, and I'd, I'd end up getting a new focuser anyways. But um, anyways, as I said, the one that comes with it is really good. Uh, okay, I'm rewriting it again. So what else does this telescope come with? Comes with well, it comes with a. Uh, uh, a hinge clamshell rings uh, with M6 uh, mounting bolts. So let me let me show you this. Here we go. We'll get a closer view. So here it is. Me. There we go. So here is the uh, the rings, the clamshell, and uh, let's see if we can get underneath that here. I have it. I made this homemade mounting thing right where I mounted all my accoutrements to. And it bolts right in with a piece of aluminum plate, and it mounts right bolts right into these these clamshell rings. And I've had this on here for almost two years now, and it works perfectly. So I'm very happy for them including a, a nice set of rings on here. And these rings also they're, they're they have felt on the inside, so they don't really scratch anything, and it's uh, gives it a nice snug feeling. Okay, so has anything changed uh, in the two years since I've owned it? Well, when I bought it, it was $1,299, and I don't know if it was on some special deal or not, but right now it's listed at $1,399. And the only difference that I can see is when I, when I bought it, a diagonal, two-inch diagonal was included in it, but they no longer include the two-inch diagonal. However, they do include a hard carrying case which they did not include when I was when I purchased it. So let me go show you what this carrying case looks like. I'll just scroll it down here. And you can see it on the ground right here. Maybe not, there it is. And it's uh, actually pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. There you go, and it, um, it's form -fitting, that form-fitting foam stuff, so it works out pretty well. That was $149, and the diagonal is $149, so I think they just swapped it out for whatever reason. All right, at $1,400, this is still a really good deal for a medium-sized triplet refractor. I've seen other top-of-the-line models of medium-sized triplet refractors, and some of them cost five times as much. And I'm not going to say this is as good as those things by any stretch of the imagination. However, you got to ask yourself, is it? going to be five times a better image that you're going to get out of some of those? Yeah. I don't think so. Okay, there was another recommended accessory that I would highly recommend you get, and that is the focal reducer field flattener. It's a 0.8 focal reducer field flattener that's specifically made for this telescope, uh, AstroTech, made by AstroTech, and it's $149, but it's um, definitely worth it, and it, it gives it a wider field of view and it keeps the stars uh, pretty much flat across the whole thing. Around the edges I've noticed it, it's uh, not perfect around the edges but for most of the field of view it's uh, it's good. And I also recommend another one. Uh, I recommend a Hotec 2 inch self-centering field flattener. So that one doesn't give you the focal reduction but it is 
uh, a field flattener, and boy, that thing works awesome. I, I, I have perfectly flat stars from edge to edge. So that's also something else I would highly recommend. Okay, some final thoughts. The telescope is, the optical tube assembly is 5.3 kilograms or 11.6 pounds. With the rings, it's 13 pounds or 5.9 kilograms. I decided to go with the 115 refractor as opposed to the 130 refractor because I was actually seriously considering on getting that one. But I've got this thing mounted on my Cirrus mount and my Cirrus mount is, I would be stretching it a bit with the 130. If I was just doing visual astronomy with it, it would have been fine, but doing astrophotography, you really want to make sure your mount can handle the telescope. So I went with the 115 refractor, and boy, have I been happy with this thing. I love it. It gives a wider field of, slightly wider field of view than the 130, so I, I've got so I've got that going for it. And uh, like I said, I've just been incredibly happy with this thing. I even have some images that made it on the sky and telescope. Uh, amateur astronomy picture of the day and I've got some top picks on Astrobin so and also on NASA's Sky website so I've gotten some really good images with this and I love this telescope and I can honestly say I highly recommend it okay I think that's all and I hope you enjoyed this and we'll see you next time